It was 2013 when Carl and I started fishing for catfish and landing our first cat was a memorable experience. Four years later at the same lake the fish had grown even bigger and it was now time for us to return in search of a new personal best. Finally the hot summer weather has arrived, carp are showing signs of spawning so they're not going to be the target species this session. Today we're going to be trying to catch a big catfish. So for this catfish session we've come to a lake which we really do enjoy fishing for the cats at. The reason why this lake is so good is because it's not so full of catfish that it's easy. You're not catching one a chuck. It is a good challenge, but it's also not impossible. And you know on this particular lake, if you do hook one, you're gonna have a battle on your hands. These fish fight so hard. And as you can see by the swim we've chosen here, it's full of pads, full of features, lots of snags and stuff. And when you hook one, it's almost a little bit terrifying because you don't really know if you're gonna land it or not. You know, it's a 50-50 whether or not you're actually gonna get it in. But, Things are looking good, the weather's been really warm today and uh, my fingers are firmly crossed that we're going to catch one. So it's time to get the rods out. As I said, loads of features in front of this swim, so plenty of places to, to cast the rods and to bait up. So we'll see how things go. And feet for feet six, seven to go. Catching catfish is fairly simple when it comes to the tackle and rigs and stuff that you're going to use. You don't really need to pay much attention to detail. The important thing is that you take whatever you would be using and make it a hell of a lot stronger. For example, I've gone and taken my carp rod, my carp reel, but instead of having like 12 pound mono or something, this lake is full of snags, it's full of pads, all undercut banks and fallen trees and stuff, and you can't go in lightly. So I've spooled up with 40 pound braid that stuff, if a cat is surging towards some snags or towards some pads or something, I can just lock up the clutch and stop it from reaching them. Attached to that braid, above it, is roughly a rod length or so of 40 pound monofilament. This stuff is of a thicker diameter than the braid, so you have it there to protect the fish. You don't really want the braid rubbing against the fish or potentially cutting into it. So the mono protects the fish, but also, should your fish sort of take you round some mussel shells or some sharp branches or something, the monofilament is much less likely to cut or break or be damaged because it's very, very abrasion resistant. Running on that monofilament is my lead. I set it up on a run, running rig so that when the catfish picks up the bait, it can swim off and feel no resistance. So I get a bite, then I can set the hook rather than it picking it up, feeling the weight of the lead and then letting go. At the end of that mono, I've got a swivel and a bead and that's tied onto my hook link. My hook link's made of very, very abrasion resistant, powerful, strong braid. This material will be what comes into contact with the catfish's pads. Now, although they're not really got teeth like pike or zander or something, they do have very, very abrasive pads. And the worst thing you can do is have a thin braid or mono rubbing against it because it probably will cut. So a super thick braid like this, approximately 50 pound or more breaking strain is perfect. A big old hook on the end and a simple hair rig. Underneath that, a big lamp of spam and a small slither of foam to use as a bait stop. The reason I use the foam as opposed to just popping in a small boily stop is I'm fishing with spam. This is a very soft bait and you don't want the bait stop to pull through the meat. So a big lump of foam like that locks the bait in place and it will not fall off. It has the added advantage of being quite buoyant so the meat will sort of sit there and flutter up into a fish's mouth quite easily. So there you go. The underlying message with the tactics sort of tackle that you're going to use for catfish is just make it strong enough to land the fish that you're likely to hook. In this lake there's fish up to I think 70 pounds, actually over 70 pounds, so you don't want to go and hook one of those and then have inferior tackle that you're not going to land it with. So go hard, go heavy or go home. So I just cast that rod out and flicked it just on the edge of a set of pads. Now the thing with cats is they do like a bit of cover over their heads. Whenever we've seen catfish in the water on this lake, they've tended to be sat up either in the pads or in the undercut banks. They do seem to like, you know, an area where they feel safe and where they can hide away and wait for a prey fish or something to come to them. The other thing I'll just take a moment to say is that although I've got my, set, my reel set on free spool so that when a fish picks it up, 
it can take line very easily without any feeling any resistance. The real clutch, like the playing clutch, which engages when you turn the handle, is set already. Just because I know in the past we've had takes which have absolutely melted off. We've picked it up, we've gone bam, and we've got, oh no, the clutch is up too tight, or it's too slack, or whatever. You want to be on the ball from the off to make sure that you land them. So I've got the clutch set just right already. Perfect. And then I'll clip free spool on and make sure that the fish is ready to take line on the bite. Sweet. Fingers crossed. The rods are out, all six of them, spread out throughout the length of this arm. We've put them towards all the sort of bigger features such as the point, the pads, and we've also got a couple in open water, so we're hoping wherever the catfish pass through, we'll be able to intercept them. It's certainly quite a mild night. It's feeling good for it, although with this clear sky, it might drop a little bit. But I'm hoping that the catfish are on the feed. We're sort of into the first few weeks of proper warm weather now, and that's normally the best time for catfish. So all we can do is keep our fingers crossed that one of these catfish is hungry and it might pick up our bait. That's got to be a bite. Yeah. Oh my God. We are in. Whoa. Man, that rod is bent double. I forgot how hard they fight. Every spring, we go, let's go on a catfish session. And every spring, we hook one, and we're reminded that they're the strongest fish in fresh water, I swear. I, I can't even put any more pressure on it. We've got it under control now, just got to get it in the net. He's in. He's in. <laughs> that was easy. That was unusually easy. He just rolled straight in. Oh my god, how wide is it? God. It's the fattest cat I've ever seen. <laughs> that is one fat that cat fish. Is, he's obese. He's like a giant guy. Group. <laughs> from under you, bro. Well, that didn't take too long. <gasps> oh, the adrenaline, man, when that fish is just stripping out. I'm actually really lucky with that one. Alex whipped in the two rods either side of me. And then the fish just sort of fought in, in, the, in the middle area. Normally it would be like straight down it, straight down around the point. Like, But yeah, this one behaves quite well. <sighs> Got to calm down, get everything ready, and uh, it's time to wrestle a catfish. <laughs> Ooh. 
A quick tip for anyone who wants to deal with a catfish and not get too slimy and smelly, bring a pair of waders or waterproof trousers and a coat that you don't mind destroying because it saves you going to bed wearing horrible wet clothes. Whoa! What does that say? That's saying just over 50 pounds. 50? What, and a few ounces? 50 and a few ounces. Oh my god, no way. Well, that's definitely beating my personal best. Holy macaroni. Well, there you go. That's a, uh, a 50 pound catfish. They are typically very, very difficult to hold, but we'll just admire it whilst it's laying on the mat for the moment. Although, they all pretty much look the same and they're not particularly pretty. The, uh, the mottled sort of dark and light coloration on its flank is uh, it's probably the coolest looking catfish I think I've ever caught actually. Yeah, there you go. 50 pound catfish. How's that? Cream cracker. Goodbye, mate. Oh man, I was not expecting to go on that soon. I'm a bit wet. Somehow I managed to go a bit over my waders, but I'm happy. First cat of the year, out of the way, and it's my biggest ever catfish ever. So can't complain, man. I'm just knackered, like absolutely tired out, like from the, the battle, from trying to hold it up. I'm gonna sleep well tonight, that's for certain. After the first bite, Carl said I could have the next run, although I seem to be in a pretty deep sleep. Hey. In. Yeah. <laughs> that was a bit of a crazy fight, but we got it in. <laughs> you didn't even wake up for the I didn't even wake up. Carl said I could have the next run, and it was him and his rods that went off. He struck and then he woke me up. <laughs> I was like, Alex, the rod's going. Oh, he's not waking up. He must be tired. He is another 40 pounder at oh. least.
There we go, my first capture of the year. Not quite as big as Carl's, but it's still a monster fish. He gave a crazy fight as well in the water. Nice. <laughs> yes. Well done, Alex. Sweet. You got him. I got him. No. He's gone. He's gone. He's gone already. Oh yeah. I think I'm done for the night. Sleep time. been raining absolutely all day but it's been about 15 to 18 degrees which I believe to be pretty good catfish conditions I'm hoping they'll be on the munch so we're heading back down the lake and we're gonna do just an overnighter we're not gonna be down there too long because we've got to head off to work in the morning but the weather looks prime for a catfish or two so we're gonna give it a go Come on, the catfish. Are we the only people who are mad enough to fish on this such rainy night? There is no one else here on the whole fishery. All seven lakes are empty. I don't know whether that says we're really stupid or we're really clever. But I think if we catch a catfish, we're the ones who win. Oh, I don't want to go out there. <laughs> it's horrible. Love that sound. He's in. We did it, it's not even dark yet. We thought we were gonna get a bite in the night maybe, but we got one before it even gets dark. Yes! <laughs> Mental. It's not like a big one for this lake, but it's still a big fish. <laughs> it was this big. Hello, is that Jeremy Wade? Yeah, I have a river monster here. Can you please help? It can see that the water is just there. <laughs> it's like in the bucket. <laughs> yeah. Okay, right. Well, it's quite regular that you hear an angler say, oh yeah, it was this big and they stretch their arms out from like end to end. Well, actually, if I stretch my arms out from end to end, that is how big this catfish is. Okay, by, by no means is this a like a lake record or anything, but 
it's still a really big fish. And from previous experience, I'm gonna struggle to hold it. So yeah, we'll see how this goes. Yeah, not very well. <laughs> oh, he's, he's doing it. <laughs> Yes, like a boss. I'm Look at it. that. I've managed to hold it. So for about 30 seconds, I've managed to hold it. I think I'm gonna get Alex to jump in and help me get a good photo of it. Cause I'll be honest, I'm not doing a very good job with this, but there it is. Probably a 40 pounder. In fact, almost certainly 40 pound plus of catfish right there. Ugh. And now I'm covered in snotty stuff. <laughs> Just yeah, I can see it. On the camera? Yeah. No it's just about to see its tail. There's its tail of the cat. Right. Yeah. Still see its tail, just really? about, yeah. Just swimming along. That might be on. Yep. On? Yep. Oh, he's heavy. <laughs> Second cat of the night. It hasn't even got dark yet, and I'm halfway eat through eating a biscuit. Mmm. He's gonna go wherever he wants at. <laughs> You're being pulled off of your feet. No! No! What the heck, Paul? No! That was a monster. Two bites before it's even got properly dark. First one covered the hands, the 50 pounder, we were all happy, everything. Another bite, couldn't believe it, another bite and. Mental fight again, but this time it's just come off. Because no. you played him like a noddy. He was playing me. <laughs> no. Damn it. Never mind. On? Yeah. There we go. You almost have to throw your rod at the ground. Yeah. Once, once he's half in the net, throw the rod on the ground and grab the net with both hands and bundle them in. So third bite of the night. First one was Carl's and it was a 50 pounder. Next one, unfortunately I lost. And about half an hour later, the rod screamed into life again. And this time it was a upper 30. So they were all big fish. They're on the munch tonight, man. On the munch big time. We've never had a catch session like it. That's wicked. Awesome. Oh, he's getting lively. Catfish slap. <laughs> yes, Alex. Big catfish. After my catch, Carl landed yet another, this one being about 20 pounds. It had been an extremely productive night's fishing. Well, that was probably the most successful overnight that I've ever done on this lake. We had four bites in total, landed three of them, which is pretty good going when you're fishing for catfish when they do fight hard around all the snags and pads. And now we're just packing up because we've got to go to work in Wales, so that's quite a long drive. That's why we're packing up nice and early. But yeah, it's been a successful couple of trips catfishing. Can't believe it, Carl's broken his PB. 
Uh, I've caught some big catfish as well, so yeah, it's been good.